Father, we thank you. We bless you now for this time. Give us wisdom. Give us the words to say what needs to be said. And Father, we thank you right now. Open the eyes of your people. God, that they will see and hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So on May 20th, Mr. Pelt decided to file a lawsuit trying to go back after the property. Now, let me pause here. Dr. Sammy G. Ellis had a meeting. Because you know, and we're going to use the term, y'all know Ellis. Ellis would not throw his hands, throw his rocks and hide his hands. If he said it, he'll tell you he said it and say it to your face. Much like I am. And um, he had a meeting with Mr. Pelt uh, several weeks ago. And uh, he said the same thing. That, hey, they want, you lost the case. Why are you still you know, doing this? And soon after that, he went May 20th. Look it up. Homage kind of crook of the court. Found another case suing them for the property. By the way, just also a reminder that he also sent the bill of several thousand dollars from that suit and civil case to the church. So meanwhile, the officers of the church that were excommunicated had to pay for their own attorney. He sent the bill that to the church of several thousand dollars <laughs> instead of him or the state office paying for it. That's that's come on, come on. As our president Joe Biden says, come on, man. And let me just say, I'm <laughs> I'm really I'm really disappointed in this. So now let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. This is all review. This is all review. Now, another thing that happened is that Mr. Pelt decided that he was going to um, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022, Mr. Pelt decided he was going to incorporate the church, well, with sunbiz.org, where every you know, church of business has to, you know, found their nonprofit status or even for-profit status, the annual report and the officers, et cetera, et cetera. He's filed it, and he has Claudius Pratt, Arnold Williams, Martin Wright as the officers of the church. There is no one from Fifth Street Church of God, including Howard Rowe, the pastor, none of them on the incorporation with the state. Anthony did that, and he used a, 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 a accounting firm called we Nathaniel Weaver and Company, something like that, out of Altamont Springs. Uh, maybe I wonder if he's related to Al Weaver, Pastor Al Weaver. Anyway, I digress. All these different things, and you wonder why would he intentionally file a document with an official document with the state that is a lie? I mean, if you, I mean, the churches usually do it themselves, and my understanding that when they went to do it, it was already done, and nobody from the church to this day is on the church corporation. Now this time for 2022, he didn't put his name on it. He put Arnold Williams, L.M. Wright, and Claudius Pratt on there. If, if somebody has Pratt's number, call him and find it, does he know? If somebody uh, has uh, uh, L.M. Wright's number, call him and find it, does he know that he's an officer of the Fifth Street Church of God? We know Arnold Williams, my, my dear cousin, God bless him, we know he knows because he signed it. But I, <laughs> anyway, now, in the midst of all of this, that's being taken care of. But when I was uh, looking for uh, pictures of the campground, okay, Florida Cocoa Office, Cocoa being the city, not the color, Cocoa Office. Um, picture of the campground, come to find out, ladies and gentlemen, come to find out, a document came up, and it kind of caught me off guard. There's a March 3rd, 2022, March 3rd, 2022, lock it down, it shall go down, there's a day in infamy. Mr. Pelt decided he was going to um, incorporate the Church of God Campground Church of God Campground Development LLC, a for-profit corporation. Now, why would the overseer file a 
for profit LLC on the campground when the campground is a nonprofit organization. Uh, Dr. Ellis asked him that question. I've asked him. He has responded. He blocked me. Uh, we've also asked Tim Hill, the general overseer, Timmy, why? To no avail, no response. The campground was purchased, what, 1992, 93? So uh, they're already uh, at the, towards the end of their 30-year mortgage. Tell me this, as an aside, why do they still owe uh, a few hundred thousand dollars on a campground they've been paying on for 30 years, nearly 30 years? The only way that could be is if you've refinanced it or you've gotten mortgages off of it and did something with the money, but didn't put it towards the principal. That's all the reason I can see that, because it should be paid for by now. I know myself and many, including Dr. Ellis is one of the first ones, Mr. Quad Miller, and many of you, many of you, my mother. I mean, the list goes on and on, paid your money. As a matter of fact, I think the first people that gave it started off giving $1,000. And yet you still owe somewhere around half a million dollars still on the property? So if you owe half a million dollars on the property after 30 years, hmm, but yet you go and start a LLC for profit, and here's the kicker, you ready? When I posted that online the other day, it was reported to me that a lot of people, including ministers in the state, state councilmen and even members didn't know a god blessed thing about it yeah i'm gonna read it backwards electronic articles of organization for a florida limited liability company filed when it says the name of the limited liability company is church of god campground development llc filed March 10th was when it was actually finally went through the system there at 8 a.m. by the Secretary of State. So it took a week. The street address of the principal office of the limited liability company is 33926 County Road, 473 Leesburg, Florida, 34788. The mailing address for the limited liability company is 4015 U.S. Highway 1, Cocoa, Florida, 32927. That's, wait. Isn't that the state office? Hmm. Hmm. Article B, other provisions. The reason, here we go. Watch this, watch this, watch this. My former pastor, my bishop said, to develop the Church of God, Florida Cocoa owned campground into a mixed use development. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slap me on the nose and call me Rudolph. It's a campground. It's rented out to organizations and used for events. What mixed use do you need? Oh, for profit. Yeah. The name and Florida street address of the registered agent is Anthony T. Pelt, and it has his home address there in Coral Springs. It says, having, watch this, having been named as registered agent and to accept service of process for the above stated limited liability company at the place designated in the certificate, I hereby, this is his signature now, I hereby accept the appointment as registered agent and agree to act in this capacity. I further agree to comply with the provisions of all statutes related to the proper and complete performance of my duties and I am familiar with and accept the obligations of my position as registered agent, registered agent signature, Anthony T. Pelt, Sr. The names and address of persons authorized to manage this LLC. The manager, Anthony T. Pelt Sr. AMBR, Clinton Ruddock of Lauder Hill, Claudia C. Pratt of Coco, and Arnold Williams of Coco. The effective date for this limited liability company shall be March 4th, 2022. Signature of member and authorized representative, Anthony T. Pelt Sr. I'm going somewhere, but this ain't, this ain't even the good stuff yet. Here it is on the signature. Uh-oh. 
I am, a, I am the member or authorized represent, representative. Who authorized him? Authorized representative submitted these articles of organization and affirmed that the facts stated herein are what? True. No, that's a bold-faced lie. I am aware that false information submitted in a document to the Department of State. Oh, Lord, I didn't even read this myself. Let me start this over. I'm aware that false information submitted in a document to the Department of State constitutes a third-degree felony as provided for as in S. Code 817.155 FS. I understand the requirement to file an annual report between January 1st and May 1st in the calendar year following formation of the LLC and every year after thereafter to maintain active status. It's a third degree felony, y'all. Oh, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on my soul. Gracious Lord and eternal God, our Father. Now, I, I, I gave you the officers for the limited liability company. Watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm not done yet, somebody better come and get me. Cause now it's finna, it's, as the country folks say, it's finna get good now. You ready? You ready? Watch this now. Hmm. Ha Glory. Jesus, have mercy. Now I want you to notice something on my iPad here. Also on January 29, 2022, we have the annual report for the campground, the Church of TOG Youth and Retreat Center. Notice here, notice there, the campground actual legal name is the COG Youth and Retreat Center Incorporated. Anthony filed the limited liability company as Church of God Cramp Campground Development, LLC. Two different names. The officers of the campground stand President Anthony Pelt, Vice President Eddie Solomon, Director Keith Hardiman, ST Diane Lewis, and Director Charles Bargainer. So the question is, now the question is, not only does the, 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 the state council know this and approve this in advance, but do the actual officers that are responsible legally for the campground, Eddie Solomon, Keith Hardiman, Charles Bargainer, Diane Lewis, were they aware? It seems right there. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Here's the bottom line, whether he has nefarious intentions or not. Let me lay this out for you, then we go go. Number one, Timmy's invited, Timmy, Timmy has authorized this because what you all don't know is in Florida Tampa office, which is the predominantly white office here in Florida, their campground is in Wamama, where they have their state camp meetings, camp conventions, and meetings in whole nine yards, about 15 minutes down the road. They're now, they've already turned, they started turning the part of the campground in Wamama into a cemetery. Oh no. It's called, look this up, Church of God Funeral Plan. Church of God Funeral Plan. Look it up. Lake Wamama Memorial Gardens. They are selling cemetery plots, the vaults for the cemetery for the for the burial, the caskets and the service for fifty nine hundred dollars. So apparently, they have told Anthony, "Hey, you ain't got to worry about paying that five hundred thousand dollars on that." Man, start selling some of that stuff. It's been reported to me that a retail store, a Dollar Tree, Dollar Drill, or Family Dollar, something like that on that order, has been, uh, wants to buy a parcel of land on the, on a corner there of, uh, uh, to build a store there. So that is it. That, that sale is in process right now. I wonder if the board knows that and the council knows that, but maybe the sales are already going through. I don't know. Where's the account? for this LLC. Who, wait, can I ask a question? Who manages the money at the state? Who's the treasurer? 
I know Mr. Chenault was the treasurer for years, but he's gone, dead and gone. God bless him. Dead men can't sign checks. Ah, mercy. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Traditional funeral with cremation to follow, 3975. See the caskets? Quentin. Some of my funeral brothers. Look at that. Traditional church funeral with ground bearers to follow, $5,945. With your choice of a casket. Isn't that so sweet? So the Church of God is now, they're more worried about liquidating land and making money than making souls. Oh, bless his name. Look here. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Look at Look, look, look. What did I say? $5,945 for Church of God funeral plan. See that? Churchofgodfuneralplan.com. Go to it. Go to the website. Go to the website. Come on. I'm not a lying preacher. Oh, Jesus. So I don't know if there's something there that Timmy and Anthony have gone. But there's a plan. There's a reason why he did this on his own. I have asked Anthony to come on. Again, yet again. Here it is. Hold on. Here it is. Because I want, I, you know, I want to show you. I, I want to show you. I want to show you. I want to show you. Here it is right here. And it's actually on the video. <laughs> on the video that I advertised this, I showed it on there. But I'm going to show it again. But I want nobody to say, he just lied on my mission. Here it is right here. It says, I'm willing to give you an opportunity to speak your piece and clear the air. We're both men of God and should be able to sit down and resolve this in a godly manner. I'm going live on my podcast late tonight. I waited as late as I could to 1130. Let me know. No response. Okay, cool. That's cool. Now, I have another question. When was the last time you all got a financial report from the state? I'll wait. When's the last time a, the monthly tithe the tithes report was sent out? Like they used to do back in the day. To see who, how many members you had and what your tithe tithes was reporting. I remember way back when Pep became the overseer and and uh, Dr. Ellis was talking about he didn't pay a tithe the tithes right. And that's true. I showed that as well. He said, they told Bishop, he said, Bishop Renault told him to just pay what you could afford. No, tithe ain't pay what you could afford. Tithe is tithe. Tithe means tenth. He didn't do it. And so when the Bible says, will a man rob God? Yeah, how? In tithes and offerings. So he was started robbing God, not paying his tithe of tithes back in the day when he was a pastor. Now, we have to ask ourselves the question, is he robbing God and robbing the saints by not giving any financial accountability? I don't know. I can't answer that question. Oh, oh, it gets worse. Wait, there's more. Understand, my brothers and sisters, if you don't have a treasurer, then who's signing the checks? Who's carrying the checkbook around? Now, back to Fifth Street, because here it is. Here it is. Why is he so concerned about Fifth Street? Of all churches, they haven't had a mortgage in 40 years. Why is he so concerned about their property? Well, here's the bottom line. He got him a high price attorney, attorney Golden, white guy, went to Harvard uh, uh, Law School around the same time Obama went there. The file that was 900 some dollars. I'll show you that too. Got him a white brother this time. Harvard Law School. Mm. Yeah. But see, he knows that white brother has the connections with the white folk that's building and developing and want to do all that kind of stuff in Palm Beach and West Palm Beach. He can sell the air rights by showing that the corporation, he and the state or in, own the church, basically is what he's saying by the sun biz. Well, hey, he could be made a deal. Faith be having church wouldn't even know they don't even own their own property. By the way, I'm going to say this again. It may sound harsh, it may sound rude, 
But there's something nefarious going on because here he is. He started his church in 2004. He split Deerfield, Cathedral Church of God, started it, had, got great members, good members, strong members, strong church. Well, how come after 18 years you still don't even have a building? You still have a church in the elementary school lunchroom. But yet you worried about another church that has land that's paid for their property. He said in the Palm Beach Post article that he has the right to all the property in the churches and so on and so forth in the state bar none. Okay, go on up there to Blue Heron and, and, and say, tell them that. Go on up there, let's go a little further. Go on up there to Jubilee Church of God and tell them that. Go, no, go a little further, go to Port Salerno. God bless you, go to Port Salerno. Go to Port Salerno and tell them that you as the bishop have the authority over their building, their property. <laughs> I'm from Port Salerno. <laughs> My mother was the clerk for 30 some odd years before she retired from that. After being in the school system for 40 years as a principal. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what the finances are, but everybody knows Port Salerno. You know, they, they built that church in 94, paid it off in seven years. They bought subsequent property all around the church. The old church across the street is... Another Spanish church is in there. They have a parsonage that they built and paid for. By the way, the pastor has his own house, Bishop Hutchinson, his own house across the street from the parsonage that he bought his own property, bought the property with his own money, built his own nice house bigger than the parsonage, and paid it off. But you, 18 years with a church, and don't have a building, but you worry about somebody else's building. Okay, all right, all right, I got you. Okay, here's the bottom line. State convention is coming up next week. Timmy's going to be there. <laughs> Timmy, I'll see you. I'll be there. State council, ministers, y'all need to hold him to the fire. I'm talking about Anthony now. He needs to answer some questions. And whether he answers the questions or not, he needs to be removed immediately. They don't wait till General Assembly a month later. Just let the state councilmen, let them run the state for the month until. Matter of fact, you know what? Let the state council. Anthony needs to resign or they need to put him out at the state convention. Don't go further than the state convention. Take that offer y'all going to raise him on Sunday and put it on the principal of the campground. Tell him to cancel that lawsuit against Fifth Street. Tell him to come clean about that LLC. Send him home back to Radiant Living Worship Center so he can pass it that and find some property in the building, at least a storefront, and let the state council run the state for a month to General Assembly. And matter of fact, let me go one more further. State council, ministers, call your own meeting. You have the authority. I have the new minute book, 2018. He doesn't supposed to have all that authority. State council, call a meeting, and you all, ministers, y'all vote. Who gonna be the bishop? Don't let Timmy, don't let Timmy, don't let Timmy point somebody at General Assembly because he's gonna point somebody in his back pocket. Timmy might try to re he wants to reappoint. See, Timmy wants to come back and Timmy wants to point Anthony back. Because they all got a grift going on. They've been selling property in Tennessee and South Georgia and Ohio and Alabama. Church of God closing down churches, merging churches, and liquidating the property. That's a fact, even in Cleveland, Tennessee. Quote me. River Hills Church of God, right here in Tampa, in Temple Terrace, So five parcels of land around the church for $100 each. Now, who sells property for $100? You might as well just give it away. Oh, by the way, y'all didn't know this. The campground of my mama, the campground of my mama, the campground of my mama is owned by the Sharp family. Who's the Sharp family? It's a well-to-do Church of God family that the pastor, Ryan, is for Pastor's River Hills, Bless his heart, that's the guy who was saying that gay is going to go to heaven and all that, and it's all right to drink and all like that, but nobody bothered him because he's related to Timmy. Come on, y'all, y'all got to get this thing. Tim, he's related to Timmy, and his family owned the campground, and the deal is they donated the campground land years ago to the church, to the state, and they said, you can't sell it. If you don't want to use it, give it back to us. Well, they don't want to give it back to them, so what they're going to do is say, well, it would be more advantageous if we start a funeral home and cemetery on the campground so we can make some money, because we ain't making all the money like we used to during the camp meeting. Somebody come and get me. Jesus Christ Almighty. I feel my help here coming on. 
Listen, God, it's a grip. Y'all being played. Oh, and by the way, just in case you didn't know, Timmy, before Donald J. Trump was lost his election in April of 2020. Oh, yes. When Pastor Paula, my good friend, love her dearly. Love Randy, too. Talk to him every week. When Pastor Paula, Donald Trump's pastor, was up there, Kevin Cabash took his hips up there with Timmy several times. He put the pictures on Facebook. Why were they going up there? Timmy was trying to politic. So guess what happened? In April 2020, Timmy was appointed as the chairperson of Donald Trump's Interfaith Alliance. He's a MAGA supporter. He's an ultra MAGA supporter. He loves and had the, I'm sure he had, you know, he had to give some money because Trump ain't going to put you in a position until you get money. <laughs> Y'all remember Vince McMahon, the owner of WWE, his wife Linda, she lost two congressional races, but she donated a bunch of money to Trump's campaign and he ended up making her the small business administration chairman while secretary while he was in office. So he had to pay some money to get that position. Why didn't he give it to Pastor Paula? Because Timmy wanted it. Now, speaking of WWE, let me make it aside here to just show you how even the world is making the church look bad. WWE, World Wrestling Federation, W the World Wrestling Entertainment, Vince McMahon, the founder, a billionaire. Vince McMahon this week was found to have got this. Well, he, he didn't do anything illegal, didn't do nothing illegal. He just had an affair with one of the employees and they had a little non-disclosure agreement, which Church of God likes to do a lot too. Non-disclosure agreement where they're paying him, he was paying her out of his own money, like a million dollars, not to say anything about the affair. Well, it came out anyway. But here's the thing about it. Today, Vince McMahon stepped back as the CEO. Now, he was the owner and he's the principal owner, but it's a publicly traded company on the stock market now for several years. But he stepped back as the CEO, I saw this evening, his daughter Stephanie is going to be the interim CEO. Why? Because the board of directors of the WWE are investigating what happened. Not a crime, but investigating. They say, you got to go home and sit down, Vince. So now, if a billionaire that's the one wrestling has enough decency after he screwed up to go sit down and step back and let somebody else handle it, because he's under investigation by his board, why the hell can't the state council do the same thing? State council, get on your job, get on your job. Ministers of the state, get on your job. Listen, y'all don't need to worry about shouting and praising. How you gonna shout and praise the Lord next week when all when this cloud is over you? Y'all need the first day of the meeting say no, pal, no, 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 no. And when Timmy comes on Friday, tell him too. Oh, Timmy and Pelt and Tim Buck too. <laughs> Listen, it's, it's, it's time out. Nobody want to hold him accountable. Oh, bless his name. <laughs> the WWE board is investigating the founder, Vince McMahon, but Anthony Pelt, the state council. What y'all gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Sick then. Now, let me digress. State council, send him home. He should have his license revoked because y'all heard what this thing said? Let me read this again. I'm gonna read this again because I, I, I didn't even realize this because you know they say black folk don't like to read. I like to read, but I didn't even read this myself. It says here, I'm going to say it again. Well, this was a shock to me, but it's true. It says here, uh, I'm aware that false information, he signed his name, submitted in a document to the Department of State constitute a third degree felony. We know it's false. We know that was false, but he didn't have the authority. We know the Fifth Street filing is false. That's two third degree felonies. Go home, Anthony, please, for God's sake, for God's sake, for the gospel's sake, for the gospel's sake, go home. 
the state commissioner run without you. McKissick gonna come in there and kill it. Pre Rondell Prelick gonna come in there and kill it. Lee Marez, you know, he gonna do his thing. Timmy, Timmy ain't got nothing to say to me or nobody else because he letting you do all this. Huh? Huh? And here's the bottom line. And state council, ministers, elect your own overseer. How about that? Anybody, anybody. I don't even know who's on the council, but anybody on the council. But now hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. There's only one person that don't need to be the state overseer for, for two reasons. Cabarrus, no, 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 you're not ready yet. Number one, you lost your, your, your license was revoked by the same Tim Hill a few years ago. And you know why. But then all of a sudden, you got your license back when you started going back and forth to the White House with Timmy and Pastor Paula. Now, I seem to remember Joe Jackson got in the same issue. Y'all remember Joe Jackson? Dr. Joe Jackson? Oh, used to be on the Black Ministries. Y'all remember him? He got himself in a, he had a moral failure and they revoked his license. The man got sick unto death and was dying. And wanted to be have his license restored before he leave this earth. And general headquarters refused to do it. He repented. All that. But then after that happened with Cabarrus, a matter of a couple, two, three years later, he get his back, and now he wanna be the overseer? The devil is a liar. And if they move if Tim Hill doesn't do anything there, he's going to put Cabarrus, that's his buddy, Cabarrus. Y'all seen the picture of him and Cabarrus together? No, Cabarrus can't do it. We don't want Cabarrus. We don't want Cabarrus. Number two, Kelvin Cabarrus was put out in the church and his license was revoked. He has not passed him successfully. Number, that's the second reason. And number three, three's a charm. He does not deserve to be it because there's a whole lot of other pastors that have been faithful, paid their time to tithes, ain't missed a month, ain't missed a meeting, ain't missed a report, whether they had 10 members or they had 500 members. So why are you gonna put him over all those who have paid their dues? The devil is a liar. So no, go sit down, go, go pastor, do what you do. You're, you're a heck of a preacher, but it ain't your time yet. No, 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 no. I'm going to close with this. There was a quote in the Palm Beach Post four years ago, July 7th, 2018. You can find it. Here's the picture that was on the paper. Here's what Anthony said. Anthony, I want you to hear your words. He said here, hold on, hold on, hold on. He said here, quote, I'm sorry the body of Christ is being portrayed in this manner, the bishop said. It's not our intention to deface Christ and his body and his church in any way. And I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Wait, I'm trying to get it all here. To the community and anyone that's been affected by this, Bishop Anthony T. Pelt, City Palm Beach Post, July 7, 2018. If that was the truth, you wouldn't have gone back four years later and filed another lawsuit against the saints. You got to be one hell of a nigga to sit up there and sue the very people you supposed to be covering and providing oversight to and answering to God to. But that's what happens with arrogance. I didn't cuss. I said hell. And if you don't repent, that's where you're going. I'm done.